Thank you very much for tuning in to this channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to be notified about all the videos, be sure to click the bell. And of course, don't forget to check the description below. Now let's get on to the show. Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and I want to talk about something when it comes to movies that really irks me. Why are DVDs still the mainstream format in 2018? It makes absolutely no sense. So let's talk about that. Now let's do a quick history lesson on DVD first before we get into it. DVDs first came out around 1996 for home consumer use, and it started getting mainstream around 2001-2002 where it began to successfully overtake VHS in sales. So it only took about roughly five or six years after being introduced on the market. DVDs were a huge hit with consumers because they offered better video quality. They offered menus, which allowed various features such as language options, subtitles, chapter selection to skip to a particular part of the movie, and so much more. And of course, as we famously know, you don't have to rewind it anymore. You don't have any of that nonsense that you had with VHS. So it was no wonder that consumers adopted the format quickly, especially when you consider that DVD discs, as well as manufacturing costs for the players, dropped pretty quickly after they were first introduced in the market. So it was a no-brainer for DVD to take over VHS. I mean, we did have other formats like Betamax and Laserdisc, which were technically superior, but they just didn't offer as much to really entice consumers to adopt those. Plus, laser discs were this big, this big, whereas a DVD is a lot more reasonable size, and it just was something that mainstream audiences were familiar with. I mean, it was essentially a CD, but it played video, which was a really great idea. So naturally, consumers really took well to it. So Blu-ray came out in 2006 for official consumer use, so about 10 years after DVD. Now this is where things get interesting, because we're in 2018 now, and DVDs still outsell Blu-rays, typically at a ratio of 3 to 4 to 1. Now that is crazy when you think about it, because it has been 12 years since the Blu-ray format was introduced. Since then, we have had streaming internet video, services like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Video, iTunes, Google Play, you get the gist of it. Now that is a big reason why Blu-ray isn't as mainstream as, say, DVD was back in the early 2000s, but it still does not explain why Blu-ray has not overtaken DVD. We live in an era of 4K televisions that are able to output at resolutions of over 8 million pixels on the same screen. That is four times what a Blu-ray puts out, and a Blu-ray puts out approximately nine times what a DVD puts out. So it's just crazy to think about the difference in quality. Now I know some people may say, oh, I'm not gonna really notice a difference between DVD and Blu-ray. And that may be true for some people, but I think the average consumer has more discerning eyes than that. I mean, after all, what is the point of buying a 4K television or something like that if you don't want to actually take advantage of what that television has to offer? Now, I can understand for some people, maybe they just don't care about the quality difference. I can respect that. And I certainly see that in a lot of consumers' eyes, streaming just makes more sense. So I certainly understand why maybe they're not buying movies to begin with. But when I see somebody buy a brand new movie like Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle for $18 for the DVD only copy when it's literally like $2 more to get the Blu-ray plus DVD copy with a digital copy, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Are you literally going to be that much of a cheapskate to save $2? to buy a clearly inferior product? Do you not have a Blu-ray player in 2018? I mean, these things are dirt cheap now. You could buy a Sony Blu-ray player for about $50. That's only $20 more than what a DVD player costs. 
Now, I understand that some consumers are going to be really budget savvy or simply cannot afford to upgrade. But I think that that would probably be a small portion of these consumers. And I imagine these consumers probably don't buy movies a whole lot to begin with, partly because of their budget savviness. They're primarily renting movies whenever they do play DVDs. So I just don't understand why the people that would typically buy movies would opt to buy the one that's like $2 cheaper. Now, I can certainly understand somebody buying DVDs still if they're buying DVD collections that include like several movies for like $10 or they buy from the 375 bin or something like that. I mean, that totally makes sense. At that price point, who really cares? It's not like it's a movie you really give that much of a crap about, right? But when it comes to some of your favorite cinema masterpieces, wouldn't you want the best possible quality that you can get? And in many cases, that is going to be Blu-ray. Although in this movie's case, they have 4K Blu-ray, so that's something I'm going to have to invest in because it is my favorite movie of all time. That being said, given the digital format that we have nowadays, I often stream a lot of my movies also. I don't really buy movies as often as I used to. Maybe we'll buy like a movie about once every month or so. I recently bought my wife a copy of Call Me By Your Name on Blu-ray, and she really loves that movie. That's a new movie that came out with Army Hammer. I honestly don't know what it's about, but it was for her, obviously. But anyways, the point is, this was the only movie that we even bought this year. I don't buy movies that often. When I do, I'm going to try to buy movies that I really care about. Movies that I want to see often. And I'm going to be buying them on a format that would actually look good in today's age. Other than that, I'm just going to stick to primarily Netflix, Amazon, that kind of stuff. Because the quality is still really good. Not as good as a Blu-ray, but it's pretty close. And it just has a lot more convenience, honestly. So I can understand that's why consumers have moved on to those formats. But for consumers that play physical formats, what the hell are you doing, guys? Seriously, it's time that we start giving DVD a rest. I think DVD should be on its way out the door. It doesn't offer nearly the same features or quality that Blu-ray does. The cost difference is almost negligible. The cost of manufacturing a Blu-ray is basically pennies more than a DVD, so it's getting kind of ridiculous, guys. Not to mention that DVDs scratch up a lot easier. A lot of my old DVDs don't even hold up that well anymore, whereas the oldest Blu-ray I have, District 9, still plays like a champ first time around. It's just a superior format, okay? I think we should get beyond DVD. What do you guys think, though? Do you really care that much about movie formats? Is this something that you're interested in? Are you someone that takes advantage of the highest end technology? Do you just go by streaming, perhaps? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But till then, Down Phoenix out. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give a like and share if you did. But I have a question for you guys before we move on. The next episode that I do like this, I want to do a review of a movie or a TV show. Now, I've got two choices for you, so just let me know in the comments which one is more interesting to you. If you want me to review the TV show The Alienist, or if you want me to review the movie The Titan, let me know what you think you'd be more interested in. Just let me know in the comments below, and we'll see which one comes up next. But till then, Down Phoenix out.